Good morning, how are you doing? I'm exhausted because <laughs> I had Jacob Imam last night on the show and we chatted for three hours and 20 minutes and it was fantastic. And if you haven't yet watched that interview, consider doing it. We talk about what uh, Catholic politics, Catholic economics should look like. It was a really fascinating discussion. Um, yeah. So if you're into that kind of thing, go, go check that out. Also tonight, I interview Cardinal Burke, and I'm really excited about that. So if you're watching from the future, hi, um, is everything still on fire? Uh, you could watch that interview now. I'm really excited to interview him. I've got some pretty kind of interesting, maybe hardball questions for him that I think you'll appreciate. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Um, yeah, I'm excited to announce a brand new series that we are going to be launching uh, on the papacy from Suan Sona. And I'm going to let him tell you uh, what to expect from that course in a moment. But I think it is really important that we understand the papacy. I have had several debates with my good friend, um, Cameron Bat <laughs> so good I nearly forgot his name. Cameron Batuzzi. We've debated Sola Scriptura. We've debated prayers to saints. We've debated the Eucharist. We've debated purgatory. And many of these topics, uh, I think Cameron could change his mind on while still remaining a Protestant. Maybe not Sola Scriptura, but certainly the others. You know, if he looked at the biblical ev evidence, he could decide, okay, I see how you can get to purgatory from the Bible, so okay, I, accept the, I accept purgatory. Or I can see why you pray to the saints and why that's biblical, so okay, I, I also pray to the saints. And oh, I can also see uh, from Scripture that the Eucharist is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, and so I accept that. You can actually accept these doctrines, these Catholic doctrines, and still be a Protestant, Right? But there's one doctrine you can't accept and remain a Protestant, and that's the papacy. Right now, I know Cameron Bertuzzi has problems, say, with divine simplicity. But if the papacy is true, and you come to believe that it's true, then you have to accept these other things, such as divine simplicity, purgatory, etc. Even if you can't fully understand them at this point. Not that you'd ever be able to fully understand divine simplicity. Uh, on the other hand, maybe you're a Catholic who is having problems with certain doctrines. Well, if you accept the papacy, you can accept these other things because, of course, the papacy has to do with the teaching authority of the Pope, the infallibility of, of the Catholic Church. And if you get that right, you get everything else right. So that's, that's why we're doing this, and I'm really excited about it. Now, we have a ton of different courses available over on Patreon. Um, and in order to get access to this course, we want you to support us. You can support us by going to Patreon. You can also support us directly on pintswithaquinas.com if you don't want big tech to censor us. Go to pintswithaquinas.com slash give, and it'll give you two options. You can become a supporter, $10 a month on Patreon, or you can directly support this ministry. And we really appreciate it, and we actually really need your help for a couple of reasons. First, we're about to launch the Spanish-speaking arm of Pints with Aquinas. I've alluded to this a few times. We're hoping to launch it in the middle of next month. Uh, we have a host who will be flying in to do these discussions. I've hired a video editing team, marketing team, social media team to really ramp this up. All of this stuff costs money. Um, we also are, as you have noticed, we've been having more in-person interviews. And so some of these people live in Steubenville, but some don't, and so I pay for them to come in. We're also hosting debates on the channel. And because I want really good debates on this channel, uh, I, need to, I want to pay people in order to be on this channel, um, especially if you get good names on this channel. Like right now, I'm trying to get uh, Dr. William Lane Craig and Jimmy Aiken to debate the philosophical version of the Kalam argument. That uh, is difficult. You know, that's difficult to get big names to do this, especially since they're so busy, unless you're going to pay them. So all of this money that, you know, we get through either Patreon or directly on pintswithaquinas.com really supports us. And we think we give you a ton of good stuff in return. So not only will you get access to this papacy series, you'll also get a Pints with Aquinas beer stein. You'll get uh, books uh, that I've written sent to your door, Pints with Aquinas stickers and all those sorts of things. We really want to make it a good experience for you. If you become a patron, you'll get access to these videos. Now, if you give directly, obviously you don't have the whole Patreon experience, but we will still email you these videos from Suan Sona. So if you're here today, you're like, okay, yeah, I want to I support the work you guys are doing, but I don't like Patreon and I'd rather give to you directly because that's a little safer for you, and it is, believe me. Go to pintswithaquinas.com support 
and you can just become a supporter there directly. That way, Patreon doesn't get a cut. And, um, you know, if one day Patreon ever cancels us, we'll be, we'll be pretty set. So I hope you'll do that. I hope you'll consider doing that. Uh, and now I want to share with you uh, a little video from Suan Sona who's going to explain to you just what the course will be like. And I think you'll agree that it looks really exciting. By the way, the course is going to be starting uh, the middle of this month. So um, you have plenty of time to sign up now and in the future. I mean, if you're watching this and it's past the middle of the month, you can always sign up and still have access to this course. Thanks so much for considering it. Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night to whoever's watching. Um, today, I'm going to basically introduce the seven part series that uh, Matt Frad wanted me to do on my research on the papacy and helping you as best as possible defend this distinct doctrine and um, understand the objections from the other side. Now, because of my background, I'm gonna predominantly focus on scripture, but we're also gonna talk about the history of the papacy and the intricacies of papal theology. So what's papal supremacy? What's papal infallibility? Where do these ideas come from? Aside from just the scriptures, how did this idea develop throughout history? These are the kinds of questions we're gonna cover. And um, I just wanna begin by saying thank you to Matt Frad and to all the team at Pints with Aquinas for making this possible. And I want to thank you for um, watching these videos and uh, being part of this course. Uh, you're watching the trailer right now, so we're not going to go too in depth, but I'm going to introduce you to the course, the seven part series, and we're going to look at what exactly you're going to learn and what you'll need in order to get the most out of this experience. So I'm going to show you now a PowerPoint presentation that I've developed for um, this particular trailer. And what I'm going to try to do is always have PowerPoints that are aesthetically pleasing and enjoyable. So we can call this series Christ in the Papacy. So just a quick course description. This seven part series condenses hundreds of hours and dollars of cutting edge research. And that's not a joke. This did cost hundreds of dollars and hours in order to develop all the scholarship and put it into one place into an accessible and rigorous defense of the papacy. This series will introduce audiences to the Jewish literature and theology that influenced the apostles and earliest Christians, the first century origins of the magisterium, arguments for the papacy based on the identity of Jesus the Messiah, and address almost every objection raised against the papacy. Each episode will be about an hour long, and I will be available to answer your questions in the comments section. Once again, if you're uh, on Patreon, if you just go into the comments section, you make a comment, you ask a question, um, Matt will allow me to interact with all of you and to you know facilitate that kind of dialogue. So you're going to get not only me in the lecture episode video format, you're also gonna be able to talk to me uh, personally and have any clarifications or answers to any of your questions necessary. All right, so just a bit about my personal background. So my name is Swan Sona. I was confirmed on Pentecost 2020. Uh, originally, the plan was that I'd be confirmed on Easter Vigil, as is the usual. But what ended up happening was uh, COVID. And then, you know, the entire diocese was kind of like, you know, should we still have these gatherings of everybody? So this was kind of in the earlier phase when no one really knew what was going on or what would come of this. But then eventually, like uh, my priest, he assembled a team and he got everything sorted out. And I was confirmed on Pentecost, the day that the, the church started. So that was a really awesome um, experience. My confirmation saint, of course, is St. Thomas Aquinas. The reason why I chose St. Thomas Aquinas was because he was 19 when he secretly joined the Dominican order. Um, and I was 19 when I decided that I wanted to be Catholic. So I found in St. Thomas not only a philosopher friend, but also someone that I could personally relate to. Which goes into the next thing, which is that I'm a third year philosophy student at Kansas State University. I have basically a year left and then, you know, I'll be a traditional four year student and then I'll be out about moving on with my life. I've been published in Lagos, which is Cornell University's undergraduate uh, journal and also the Haythrop Journal. My article in the Haythrop Journal was about the papacy. Um, so this is a group of Jesuits, I believe, at the University of Oxford. I don't think they're formally associated with the university, but like they're stationed in the university. Uh, and then my paper in Lagos was about um, the presumption of innocence in, low, uh, in social and legal settings. So, you know, I, I have wide ranging interests in not only uh, law and theology and philosophy, but also in particularly the papacy and its history and its scriptural roots. 
And just to give you a brief testimony then, just so that you kind of know more about me, um, I grew up in a good American Baptist home. My parents were a very positive spiritual influence on my life. And, you know, growing up, I always had a good relationship with God the Son, with Jesus Christ. Um, of course, there were some rocky points, as in almost every believer's life, those things happen. But I, I fairly had a consistent relationship where I wanted to know more about Jesus Christ, the one who died for me, the one who loves me, the one who gave himself entirely to me. And I thought, what better thing is there to do than to give your mind, your body, your soul entirely to someone who gave his entire mind, body, and soul to you? So as time passed on, you know, I, I started realizing, especially from a young age, that I was interested in the big questions. I was interested in philosophy and politics, so I thought maybe I should be a constitutional lawyer. But then I was really interested in issues related to evolution and Christianity. So I thought maybe I'd be an evolutionary biologist because I was actually, you know, really enjoying biology. Um, and then eventually it occurred to me that I just should be a general philosophy major, you know, because of my interests. So maybe I'll go into ethics um, and have that be my specialization. And then I ran into St. Thomas Aquinas. I ran into the, the force of the Catholic intellectual tradition. And eventually I started realizing that there's something here to Catholicism. And of course, you know, with my background growing up, I was very used to reading the Bible. I was very used to reading New Testament scholars, to reading commentaries. So I already went in to this experience knowing quite a bit about the scriptures and um, that sort of thing. So that when my friends um, began reaching out to me and asking me about why I wasn't Catholic in, in a nice way, right? I started realizing that I could really pick up fast on um, the teachings of the Catholic Church and the biblical and theological roots. So I, I was already trained with that background in mind and that really steamrolled my conversion and helped to be a smooth process intellectually speaking. And of course, if you're interested in the work that I do, you can follow me on my Apple podcast, my Facebook page and my YouTube channel, Intellectual Conservatism. That's kind of the new logo that I made. Okay, so the seven part series is going to cover uh, these topics. So first, it's going to be an in, there's going to be an introduction to interpretation and sources. So we're going to first learn how to do biblical interpretation. How do you identify typology? How do you do it in a way that isn't like loaded or seems too wild? Or is there a proper method for doing that? How do I know what I'm doing when I'm doing exegesis versus eisegesis? So exegesis is when you just interpret. Um, the scriptures properly without reading in, right? So exegesis is kind of getting out of the text, whereas eisegesis is you reading into the text. So you don't want to do eisegesis, you want to do exegesis. So we're going to talk about how exactly um, you go about interpreting the Bible and doing so in a way that is not loaded, but is recognized as a method by scholars, biblical theologians of all stripes as a valid way of interpreting and going about um, your conclusion. When it comes to the sources, what we're going to have to do is basically explore the Jewish sources on this issue. So I'm going to be using terms like Mishnah, Midrash, Talmud, Palestinian Talmud, Babylonian Talmud. And you might be saying, what the heck is, what, what, what is that, you know? So I'm going to have to explain what these particular sources are so that it's more accessible what's going on here. The second thing we're going to talk about then are the Jewish roots of the apostolic ministry. So we're going to talk about Matthew 16, 19, Matthew 18, 18, when Jesus mentions binding and loosing. We're going to talk about the Jewish roots of the doctrine of apostolic succession. And we're going to synthesize all of this together to demonstrate, basically, that you can take it as historically certain that Christ established a magisterium. And then I think we'll get into the issue of infallibility of the magisterium and the concept of infallibility in Jewish history. We're then going to go into um, papal theology. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn about what is papal theology, what is the relationship between the bishops and the pope, and the goal here is to clarify what exactly am I arguing for before we begin to argue for it, right? So what is going on with the papacy? We're going to learn about papal infallibility, papal supremacy, Vatican I. We're going to explore what exactly the claims are of the Catholic Church. And then we're also going to explore why Rome of all places? Why do we place such an emphasis on Rome in particular? 
We're then going to talk about Peter as the new Eliakim. So we're going to defend the Matthew 16, 19, Isaiah 22, 22 parallel. We're going to talk about Peter as the new Joshua. So we're going to look at John 21, 15 to 19 and recent scholarship that's been done on that particular text. We're going to address direct objections from the Bible, Galatians 2, Acts 15, uh, and other arguments that are raised. And then we're going to look at indirect objections. So objections from history, objections philosophically, objections from theological grounds. Um, you're going to hear about bad popes. You're going to hear about Honorius. You're going to hear about all these different characters and questions that arise often in our discussion with Orthodox and Protestants on this particular issue. Now, I want to then just kind of provide a broad overview for why I begin with the Jewish roots of the apostolic ministry, and then I go into the papacy. Why isn't every single episode about the papacy? The reason why is because you want to first establish that you have an apostolic ministry. So that's going to allow Protestants to be like, okay, okay, there's a background plausibility to what you're saying here if the apostles and their successors were given this kind of teaching authority. But then we also want to mention the Jewish roots. So that when the Orthodox um, raise objections about why are you citing Jewish sources, you can say, well, the reason why is because it strengthens our case for the ministry of the apostles and provides the crucial context that you're going to need in order to understand their ministry. So the Jewish roots are indispensable for Catholics and Orthodox. And what that allows us to do is it provides a good background for the rest of the arguments going forward, such that we have the entire scope of both Orthodox and Protestants paying attention to the arguments we're giving. So that's why um, I structured the lesson in these particular ways. Now, I want to give you some quick book recommendations, and I think in each episode, I'm going to give you book recommendations as well. Um, but basically, um, just as a general overview of really good books to have in your collection. One is The Gift of Infallibility by Bishop Vincent Ferrer Gasser. This was the um, official interpretation of Vatican I, I think chosen by the council itself. So this book provides very important clarifications on the idea of infallibility and on the relationship of the Pope to his brother bishops. And a good um, you know, person who's exposited on this particular text would be Elijah Yassi in his um, YouTube channel, Underground Catholicism. Another good book that I think is often ignored or just overlooked is The Catholic Priesthood, Biblical Foundations by Father Thomas J. Lane. This book helped me immensely in my conversion from uh, being Baptist to being Catholic because it showed me the biblical foundations for not only the papacy, but also other arguments in the whole uh, cornucopia, so to speak, of the apostolic ministry itself. We're going to get a little bit pricier now. So Craig S. Keener's The Gospel of Matthew, a socio-rhetorical commentary. It's one of the most up-to-date and I think best New Testament um, commentaries on the Gospel of Matthew. Craig Keener explores issues ranging from the Jewish roots of binding and loosing, the teaching authority given to the apostles, to the age of St. Joseph when he was betrothed to the Blessed Mother. Craig Keener, even though he's a Protestant, good scholar. He uncovers just all sorts of issues and has a mastery of the sources that is going to be incredibly important and crucial for your study of the Gospel of Matthew. And in fact, I have my copy right here. This is a thick book. This is not, this is not light, you know, Saturday reading. All right. And then the last and final source I have here is um, a book by the, the Lutheran scholar, Roger David Oss, titled Simon Peter's Denial and Jesus is commissioning him as his successor in John 21, 15 and 19. I cite heavily from this book and I think it's incredible. It's not for beginners. It's, it's quite difficult. There's a lot of abbreviations. There's a lot of things that the author assumes you're familiar with. But if you're willing to go for the challenge, or if you have a sufficient kind of background knowledge, I 100% recommend this book. It is a Lutheran scholar making the argument that Christ made Peter head shepherd of Israel and his successor. And he goes into all sorts of arguments about, for instance, Peter perhaps being seated on the seat of Moses, which is the symbol of the Jewish legal authority. But that's kind of getting a little ahead of ourselves. But here are four books that I think are incredibly important to have in your collection. Now, I want to emphasize that you do not need to purchase anything 
for this course. You know, I'm making the payments, I'm making the hard hours of scholarship so that it's accessible for you because I want you to be able to take this resource and go out and evangelize and make disciples for Christ. To get the most out of this course, you should take notes and master the arguments. So pay attention to every single premise and portion of the argument. And then of course, ask questions on the Patreon. Um, I'm here to help and I want to help. I wanna close then by talking about some prayer requests. So one, I wanna pray for the Holy Father and all our bishops and priests. I wanna pray for Matt Frad's ministry on Pints with Aquinas. And I'm very thankful for um, just how nice Matt has been and just how gracious he's been in allowing me to come on and do this. And then finally, just pray for my research and discernment of my vocation. Um, you know, as I told Matt at the end of Pints with Aquinas, I've been discerning with the Dominicans. I'm going to see them again over the summer. And I have a good relationship with my uh, vocations director in the, in the central province. So uh, just pray that all that works out for the glory of God in the end. So let's pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ only begotten Son of God, perfect image of the Father. Lord, love us when we fail, when we fall short of who we can fully become. But Lord, have mercy on us and extend to us the truth that is you. Lord, I pray that you will be with Pope Francis, our Holy Father, your vicar, our head shepherd. I pray that you will watch over him and help him, Lord, to faithfully execute the duties of his ministry in honor of the blessed Peter. God, I pray that you'll be with our bishops and our priests, help them to be effective ministers and good shepherds of your flock. God, I pray that you'll be Matt Frad and with the Pints with Aquinas ministry, continue to bless it, continue to have it grow and reach out to the Catholic world. And God, I pray that um, Matt will always, always, always be reminded of how much his ministry has impacted the world and changed the lives of people and brought them into communion with you. And Lord, I pray that you'll be with me in my studies and my discernment of my vocation. And Lord, I pray that you will help all the listeners and all the audience to be blessed by the seven part series, to be blessed by my interactions with them and be to be blessed by Matt Fred's ministry once again. God, I pray that you will help all of this to be glorifying to you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Well, I wanna say thank you for watching this series trailer and I hope to interact with you soon.